Welcome to Foosball Radio. This episode of Foosball Radio is brought to you in part by 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent. Telling the story of foosball one player at a time. That's our mission here on Foosball Radio. Hey, I'm Tom Robinson, and I know everyone loves a great story. Foosball players are especially fond of stories about their own sport. That's why we are so excited about the new foosball documentary film, Foosballers. Following 20 premiere screenings in the U.S. and Canada, Foosballers is now available to the general public via iTunes and Vimeo On Demand. Just download it. Not only is Foosballers an excellent story, it was filmed by top-notch professionals from Hollywood. Foosballers director Joe Hesslinger will be our guest on this episode of Foosball Radio. At first, I mean, everyone, we, we hit up everybody, you know, cold calling, you know, either the internet or, or Facebook message. And it was a lot of radio silence for, okay. uh, I don't know, man, what do you want to do? You want to film me for a movie? That's weird. Joe Hesslinger tells the tale of the Foosball family and his journey with Foosballers, the documentary. Next on Foosball Radio. Ninety-five percent of success in life is showing up, but to be truly outstanding, you have to represent. Leave that to the pros at Five One Eight Prints. Top of the line printing for just about anything you can wear: screen printing, embroidery, and promotional items designed to your specs. Leave your mark with Five One Eight Prints, especially for your foosball jackets, tees, hats, bags, and more. Turnaround is rapid with the best quality material. Rep- Present. Hit them up now at 518prince.com or visit the brand new store at 7th State Street in downtown Troy, New York. Telling the story of foosball one player at a time. Foosball Radio. It's Foosball Radio, the ultimate foosball podcast. Hey there, I'm Tom Robinson. i got to give you a little setup on this episode. Uh, about um, nine, ten months ago, back in July of 2019, myself and a group of uh, foosball fanatics, including uh, the team of Foosball Radio, traveled to New York City in a van, uh, very specifically to go watch a new documentary film called Foosballers. We'd heard a lot about it, and uh, we were very excited. And, of course, we rented the van and went down and spent the entire evening there in New York City. Went to a thing called the Kicking and Screening Soccer Film Festival. And what a surprise. We sat down and watched on the big screen in the theater there Foosballers from beginning to end. We're absolutely blown away by what we saw in this documentary film. And uh, come to find out that this has uh, been in the works for quite some time, and learned uh, and uh, learned the name and have got a chance to chat with the director of the film who was there at the scene. His name is Joe Hesslinga. And I've been saying for quite a while, I've been wanting to get him uh, in a more formal setting, like right here in Foosball Radio. And that's what's happening today. Joe, welcome to Foosball Radio. Hey, thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Hey, listen, uh, I know you've been doing a lot of premieres across the country prior to the final release of the film uh, on a general release. How many premieres have you done? Uh, I think we've done, I don't know, close to 20 different screenings. Uh, last week we did uh, almost 10 throughout the country uh, in Canada, um, you know, one day only. Uh, everybody got a chance to see the, the film on the big screen, and now the movie's available on iTunes and Vimeo On Demand. Yes, this is fantastic. I know I've been having a lot of people saying, hey, when is this going to be out in general release? Want to get a copy of this film? I mean, uh, foosballers of all kinds, of course, foosball people, uh, have been uh, clamoring for this, and uh, we greatly appreciate it finally being a general release. So after 20 premieres... Um, do you still have a family intact? I mean, you still have a family. Life? <laughs> I do. Actually, my family has has doubled in size since we uh, since we started this. I um, see. I, I didn't have any kids going into into the pro foosball you know world, and uh, now I have two. So, well, nice. Uh, well, congratulations. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been fun. So, Joe, I know when it comes to filmmaking of all kinds, and I know that you've got a few things under your belt already, uh, F is for family being one of them. I, I'm wondering, when it comes to the procedure of, okay, I'm going to do a film about foosball, how in the world did that happen? Uh, well, we, we stumbled upon it, you know, kind of by mistake. Uh, we, we had no idea that pro foosball existed. We thought it might be funny if, if it did. Uh, so we Googled <laughs> it and, and we were blown away at uh, the amount of videos on YouTube. You know, we came across a bunch of Jim Stevens videos yes. and we're like, oh, my God, this, this guy is a legit broadcaster doing mm-hmm. – play by play for foosball like how is never no one ever heard of this uh so we went down this crazy rabbit hole and uh you know i was uh on hiatus from f is for family uh but i was also working on this uh sports interview show called uh undeniable with joe buck okay and that you know he would joe would interview these very prolific athletes you know a rod and all yeah. these you know wing gretzky and all these you know multi-world champion you know best in their sport and i was a story producer on that and okay. you know it, i got to i got to understand you know how something like that is is made you know you you figure out you know who are these athletes what makes them tick what's their backstory and mm-hmm. what's you know at stake for them you know during their careers you know what was the one thing that they were trying to to overcome uh so that gave me a lot of preparation in, into going into into this foosball documentary um because yeah we, we didn't know anything about it we had no idea who the players were yes. uh, or even that it existed, you know? Um, but we started to meet everybody. And, and when we assembled our, our cast of characters, uh, you know, the, the, these top pro, you know, multi-world champion players, uh, yes. that's when, that's when the, the, the Joe Buck, uh, experience, you know, that I had really took shape and, and I was able to try to extract all the different stories, you know, from each of the, the people in the movie. Well, I got to say, you really got to the essence of the sport when it comes to the personalities. I mean, Tony Sprademan, Ryan Moore, Cindy Head, Rob Morris, uh, Todd Lafredo. I mean, all these people. Now, was there a list of people that you wanted to entertain using for the film? How did they make the cut, so to speak? What was the, the process? Well, uh, it was a couple different things. Uh, one was, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of documentaries, you know, similar in, in you know, their, their construct where you, it's a competition documentary. Yes. And a lot of times at the end of the movie, you realize that none of the people you followed were even good. <laughs> you know, they, they, they finished like in the bottom 100 or, or yeah. something. Oh, it's kind of disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really wanted to make sure we were following the top people. Um, so, you know, we just kind of made a list and, you know, we obviously knew that, that, you know, or discovered that Tony and Ryan had this great rivalry and they were, you know, number one, number two, you know, over the past, you know, 10 years, uh, Mm -hmm. and that there were other guys, you know, and, and women too, who were, who were, you know, competing at that high level. So we were trying to hedge our bets, right? We wanted to make sure that the, one of the people we followed was going to win, hopefully, oh, uh, yeah. we had a really tiny budget, you know, it'd be kind of bad if, if none of the people we followed ended up making it to the finals or, or even winning. So, you know, we wanted to hedge our bets a little bit. Um, but as we started to meet people, you know, we went to our first tournament was in uh, Vegas and we met a bunch of the, the, uh, people who ended up being in the movie. Um, but as we're, you know, meeting everybody, we realized that each one has their own history in, in, the overall history of foosball. So Todd, you know, Todd was prolific in the seventies. So Mm -hmm. we really wanted to, you know, use the people in the movie as a, as a window into the past to explore what was pro foosball like in the seventies and what better way to hear it than through Todd, you know, we're already, we're already invested in him as a character in the movie, you know, at what's at stake for him to win, you know, then you have Robert Mares who, you know, still a top player today, but, you know, again, prolific in the nineties, you know, and that represented a different era of, yes. of pro football. And then you have, uh, you know, guys like Tony and Ryan, who are that new second generation, new wave of, of players that are, are just dominating the sport. When you first approached these individuals, these people that ended up in the movie, what was the, the general reaction of them? Were they skeptical or were they happy to help you out? At first, I mean, everyone, <laughs> we, we hit up everybody, you know, cold calling, you know, either, <laughs> internet or, or Facebook message. And it was a lot of radio silence or, okay. Eh, I don't know, man, what do you want to do? You want to film me for a movie? That's weird. I don't know. Um, but everyone, no one was like really rude, but they were, as they should be a little 
skeptical yes. um which i would probably do the same thing i'd be like why are you calling me i don't know who you are right <laughs> um but i think it was once we went uh you know we had a, a really great phone conversation with mike bowers and i think okay. after you know mike you know he, he won the the first world championships in the 70s uh from colorado and i think once he knew what we were trying to do uh you know we we set out to make a 30 for 30 caliber type of documentary about foosball yes. um because we, we knew that there hadn't really been a definitive movie done about foosball we knew that there was a great story here and i think you know i got the impression that uh you know some other people have tried to do stuff on foosball that you know was was not that great or just kind of clowned on everybody who played and we right. didn't want to do that we wanted to tell a, a real story you know and yeah. yeah there's humor and comedy but that's also life too there's a lot of humor and comedy in life and there's a lot of drama in life and we wanted to you know, really celebrate all those different facets of, of the people in the movie and, and their stories. So, Which you did very successfully, by the way. It, it, I got to say the arc of the story, because um, as, a, as, a, as a, another part of my life, I've done a lot of writing as well. I love a good story. I, you know, in, and sitting and watching that in the theater, I noticed the arc the arc of the story, and it, and it carried through this generational thing, like with Tony's dad, Tony Sprademan's dad, um, bringing him into the field, of course, because uh, uh, Tony was a second-generation foosball player. But I love that arc. Now, was that something that you knew from the beginning you wanted to tell that kind of an arc of a story, or did that develop over time? Uh, it, I mean, it developed. I mean, we always set out to make the best movie possible and tell the best story possible. And one of the fun things about documentary filmmaking about something that you don't really know about going into it is mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool surprises that you that you uncover along the way. Um, yes. And there were some really great parallels with – uh, not just Tony and his dad, but, you know, if you recall in the movie, Mike Bowers talking about the first time he won a world championship, yes. he gets emotional and he talks about, you know, going home to showing his, you know, his dad, the check saying that I'm a world <laughs> champion and what it meant to him. And I think yeah. that's really cool. And I think that, you know, to, to follow your dreams, uh, in being a pro foosball player or, you know, for me as a filmmaker, it's a, it's a path less traveled and it's one that you really have to have the support of your family and friends to really pursue it because there's a chance you're not going to be successful. Yeah, and you that's know, true. there's a, there's no promise of anything. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to go to law school, become a lawyer and make a ton of money and, and provide no. for my family. <laughs> like there's, you yeah. know, there's a, there's a lot of risk. So, um, you know, when we saw that, everyone's family was sort of behind their decision to to play foosball and it was their pursuit of of their own american dream uh that was really cool and really resonated with us oh sure uh, we often joke with uh even people like myself we play on a local level with a you know with the dyps and regional tournaments this kind of thing uh we have a name for the people who back us up that kind of support us we call them foosball widows yeah or foosball widowers um, they, they tend to uh, kind of understand that this is that thing that you're going to focus on and you're going to do it, you know, uh, come hell or high water, you're going to, you're going to be out there playing, uh, you know, once a week or, you know, uh, at least, at least a couple times a month. And, uh, there's this acceptance, I guess you could say, thank goodness my wife is this way. Um, but yeah, now you're right. There's, there has to be a support system for, uh, those players who are out there who are going to take the top. They want to go to, they go for the brass ring. If you forgive the expression, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it requires a lot of work, as you know. Yes. Um, you know, there's, uh, we naively thought, like, how good could a pro football player even be? You know, yeah. joking that, oh, how funny it would be if the filmmakers, you know, were the ones that won the world championship. <laughs> Not having any idea. <laughs> you know, we were just so stupid and naive, thinking, like, oh, yeah, it can't be that hard. All I remember right. the first time I, I, like, you know, I think we were filming with Todd or somebody. They're like, hey, why don't you, you want to play a little bit? And I'm like, uh, I got nervous and I was like starting to shake because, you know, it's it's a weird feeling to be yeah. across the table from someone who's a pro and a mm -hmm. legend mm -hmm. uh and and you you feel the whole table just like sort of shaking you know when when you when they hit the ball oh. and it's really intimidating oh yeah uh and we're like okay there's no way in hell that we can even come close to <laughs> to even competing with the, the lowest tournament player 
It's funny you you mentioned this because I just caught uh, a, a scene from Chicago Live with you, Tony Sprademan, and the two hosts of Chicago Live, and they showed one of the hosts, uh, the male host of Chicago Live, trying to play Tony. <laughs> yeah, he, but he was spinning the rods. Man. Yeah, was I was doing? like, wait, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> rules, rules, rules. I mean, he did, he blocked him a couple of times, which I thought was impressive. He did. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, so that kind of change uh, of the attitude of somebody who's like, oh, it's just foosball. How, how good could somebody possibly be here? Yeah, it's a rude awakening for some of yes, us. Yes, totally. Pe- even people have been dedicated to the sport, you know, for, for years and years and years. They come up against those higher echelon players, and it's like, oh, my goodness, what, what am I doing? You know, yeah. why are they how, – how are they so much better? Um, it's it's yeah, a fascinating. It's very humbling. It, it's yeah. humbling, and you know everybody thinks that they're the king of their own castle when oh, they yeah. beat their four friends in their basement, <laughs> or you know they they go to the bar with their their friends who never play in tournaments, and then you, you see a tournament player, and it's uh, it's 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 pretty incredible what they can do. Whole nother thing. Well, one of the things that we have to uh, mention, of course, with foosballers, uh, the 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 film, the 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 documentary series. This documentary uh, film is out there for for the consumption now of the general public, thank goodness. Um, now, once again, that, uh, the two locations people can find this. Uh, it's on iTunes, and uh, for the non-Apple users out there, it's on Vimeo On Demand. Gotcha. So both of those links are up on our website, foosballersmovie.com. Okay. And, you know, you can search it on iTunes or search it on uh, Vimeo, and you should, you should find it. One thing I want to ask you, and I think we talked about this briefly at, in New York City, but I wanted to ask you, when you, when you put this film together... Um, and you saw the final product, what was the biggest surprise to you personally as a filmmaker? Uh, biggest surprise after I finished the movie? I don't know. There's so many surprises like throughout the whole thing uh, mm-hmm. that I think I was just relieved <laughs> to get it done. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I'm finally done with this thing. I can finally go back home during the holidays and, and not have to tell people the same thing. Like, oh, you're still working on that foosball movie, huh? You know? Yeah. Um, so I was just surprised we got it done. Uh, but I think... You know, looking at it, uh, it, it, the amount of heart and the amount of, of you know, it, it's a real movie with like real stakes about real people Yes. Uh, that you don't have to like foosball to like the movie, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's, you know, when we went into it, we were outsiders. I feel like now we're sort of part of the community, um, but we really wanted to make a movie that anybody could watch, uh, okay. that anybody, put, you know, put it on could, you know see like oh i'm gonna uh root for robert or i'm gonna root for todd or i'm gonna root for ryan you know for different reasons yeah uh, everybody connects with the their own character and i think one of the the funniest things after a, a screening we screened at the at the florida film festival and we had this group of you know women in their in their late 60s early 70s and they're like oh my god I am going to sell my house. We're going to get an RV and we're going to go play foosball because that was just amazing. And these are not people you would ever see in a foosball tournament at all, but they were so stoked. And then, you know, five minutes later we had these, you know, guys from college who were like, Oh my God, where, where can we go play? Yeah. Uh, it was just really cool to see people who don't like foosball, watch the movie and be stoked on it. Um, right. You know, it's, it's, foosball is a fun game and I've always had fun playing it, never knowing that you could have, you know, be that good at it. Uh, It was just a fun thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But to see people sort of experiencing foosball for the first time uh, in this way uh, has been a a big surprise for us and and really fun. That's great. Now, you know that uh, of course this was much larger in the seventies and eighties with uh, bigger prizes and a lot more players. And yes, we are starting to see a resurgence and of course, foosballers, the, the documentary film is a big part of this resurgence. I got to say, already I'm, I'm seeing a, a big change after people, uh, you know, get a chance to see this and how inspired they are to play. So what is it that, uh, that you'd like to see as a result of this? Would you like to see it return to those, uh, the glory days? I think that'd be fantastic. Uh, you know, I, I want people to experience foosball, you know, who, who never really knew about it the same way we did when yes. we discovered it, you know, like this, this childlike wonderment of, whoa, this exists, this is really cool. And, you know, in my opinion, I think it could absolutely be on TV, on ESPN or Fox or any one of the the big broadcasters. Uh, And I think, you know, the, the thing now is, is making it available to the public. I think Mm -hmm. pro foosball has been so cool 
for so many years, but nobody really, you know, outside of the community knew about it. And now, you know, through the right. movie, I think people will, will be able to experience it. We'll find out about it. And, you know, taking, you know, those tournaments out of the, you know, back of a ballroom onto the center stage, you know, with, a, with an actual, you know, spectators and an actual audience uh could be really fun now you're uh, a full-time resident of, of california i take it uh yeah, yeah okay and uh, what's the scene like in california now do you have any uh, any players nearby uh so i live uh i live in la and la is pretty you know pretty big town yes. uh so there's a couple of foosball tables around my area but you know for the past couple of years, I didn't really have a social life. I oh. was going to work. <laughs> I was coming home. I was editing the movie. And then I had two kids in between. So, you know, I don't really get to go out and play as much as I'd like to. And right. I don't have a table because I'm in an apartment, you know. Right. But uh, there, there is a big scene in L.A. They have the L.A. Foods Club. Uh, the the people that, that, you know, put on the tournaments, the promoters here, um, you know, Phil and Chris and Noah. Okay. Uh, they're really awesome. Uh, and, you know, they've the times I have come out have welcomed me, you know, with open arms. And, and it's been a really fun time. They used to have tournaments at a brewery and now they have them at a, a, a bar that's actually right attached to a, one of the big soccer stadiums uh, down here. So oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's a, they, they have a cool scene. No, it's uh, it's it's amazing because each area now, uh, you know, we're, we're as a as a foosball podcast trying to examine the various clubs across the country, uh, looking looking specifically to see what what people are doing to draw others out into the sport because that's really it's how it's done right in a grassroots sense, uh, bringing people and making them interested in this uh, maybe a weekly tournament or something where they can go out and kind of learn the game. Uh, it's a it's a tenuous thing, you know. It for us it ebbs and flows flows in upstate New York. Uh, we have great nights and then not so great nights, but that's like anything else. But we do, uh, we need to find the formula because uh, what's lacking, of course, like you mentioned, is TV coverage. Um, you know, the public awareness sponsors is a big thing. Uh, yep. A lot of debate going on about this. And uh, of course, what, uh, as far as you're concerned from the outside, uh, what would you suggest would be the the the, uh, the best thing we could do as a sport to get this more publicized? Uh, well, I think you know, as far as media coverage, you know, hopefully the movie can help with some of that. You know, bringing yes. in that that outside world who doesn't know anything about foosball, bringing them in and acting as sort of the bridge between you know the non foosball crowd and the the people who are into the tournaments. Right. Um, but one of the other cool things that I I've been able to experience while we while we screen the movie in different places is seeing what the different clubs do and uh similar to what you know you get to learn with the podcast is i got to go to you know buffalo and see you know how, how matt mccrory does his tournaments and, right. and how he recruits new players and it's really cool um so i think you know having promoters that that want to bring in new new people and teach them i think that's the biggest thing yeah. is you know even though i you know i've been to a couple tournaments i, I never win uh <laughs> but it's it's because that 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 skill level from, you know, a super beginner, like a true beginner, not a tournament beginner, but a right. beginner beginner mm -hmm. is so, so there's such a, a, a gap between that and a tournament player that oh, no like, doubt. the newer people, they need their hands held a little bit. They want, you know, having the promoters do open houses and, you know, yep. just having like free play on the tables for a couple hours to mm -hmm. bring in those new players and say, Hey, I'm going to teach you guys how to play. Yes. And, you know, it, it requires the promoters to kind of, you know, not just run a tournament, but, you know, teach new people about passes and, you know, learn the rules. And I think that's really the key is just opening it up to to people who are like the foos curious, you know. Right. You know, you're absolutely correct, because uh, and again, in our experience locally, uh, we have a, a tournament in a pool hall that happens every Friday and people walk past and watch. OK. And uh, yeah. of course, they see this very young kid in our group. Uh, uh, Sam Dijon, who's 11, uh, who's who's uh, already an expert at his age, but they watch him play and go, "Oh my God, that kid!" And and they'll they'll say, "Well, you know, I used to play this game. I really liked it." And they kind of go, "But yeah, no thanks. Um, yeah, good." <laughs> Yeah, well, nobody, yeah, nobody wants to get their ass kicked by, a, by an eleven-year-old or 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 a woman or or someone who's younger than them. Like yeah. you know, there's the, the, a lot of guys are like tough and have that. Oh, I don't want to lose to a, a girl. And right. you see some of the the women players, they're filthy. They're awesome. They're like so good on a foosball table. Yep. 
and and you're like oh that that might hurt my ego a little bit too much you know to, to get <sighs> get whooped like that <laughs> well you know it's it's a, it, it is a dilemma but you're right we have to you're right we have to do some hand holding we have to bring people in and say hey listen i want to show you the basics of this and show you how you can get better pretty quickly and uh it it takes obviously extra time and dedication of the, uh, the better players to do this kind of thing and really organize it properly uh, you're absolutely correct about that so one more question before I let you go, because I know you're on a tight schedule here. But if you had another film to make about foosball, what would you include in that? And uh, what would you call it? Easy. Uh, well, I don't know what I call it, but I, I do have an idea uh, for a follow up. Um, OK, so similar to how we did, you know, six individual players competing at the Tornado World Championships. Uh doing something on a global scale so instead of following individuals you follow nations yes. so you'd follow team usa you know team france uh, yeah. you know iran has a team uh germany has a team there's a lot of different nations who play foosball oh yeah uh and follow their journey to the world cup i think that would be really cool it'd be fun to you know see what foosball culture is like overseas you know what is the the tournaments like what's the mm -hmm. the leagues what are those like what's the differences on the tables i mean that was one thing I wish we could have covered more is the, the international competition and how, right. you know, right. strategy and gameplay on a, on a Bonzini table is different than a tornado oh, and, and Orlando and, you know, the different styles of play. And uh, that is a whole nother can of worms that, you know, would require at least one movie, if not a whole series, you know, leading up to uh, the World Cup. Well, if you don't mind me saying, on behalf of the entire foosball community, uh, you're hired. <laughs> All right, right on. Uh, <laughs> We'd well, love thanks, to have right? you do that. That would be yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll see if we can't get uh, you know someone to, to get behind it and, and you know make it a reality. And again, we also want to thank you as a group that uh, that you exist, that you did this thing, this thing called Foosballers, uh, this documentary film. Phenomenal work, man. I mean, we're so I, I'm I'm so happy to have gotten a chance to chat with you, and that you took the time out to to spend with us today. This is really truly an honor. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and I just want to say, uh, you know, the movie wouldn't exist if it wasn't for people like you and and all the everyone who plays foosball yeah so as as you know as you're saying thanks to me i i have to say thank you to everybody who you know finally you know agreed to let us interview them and tell the story because uh there's a good chance that this movie would never be made uh if if we got enough doors slammed in our face i mean we're kind yeah. of persistent so we probably <laughs> yeah. wouldn't have let it go that easy but um you know thank you to to all the local promoters all the local players to, yes. to the big promoters to, to everybody in the movie uh who graciously opened their doors to let us you know into a very intimate part of their life and, yeah. and tell the story so i appreciate the trust that everyone had in us well so uh once again joe hesslinga director of foosballers the documentary film once again joe tell us where we can find this film uh, it's on iTunes and Vimeo On Demand. Both the links are uh, up on our website, foosballersmovie.com. And uh, we should be having, if it's not set up by the time this goes live, uh, a little store where you can have some uh, can buy posters and, and T-shirts, too. There you have it. Foosballers, the, the, the movie, and Joe Hesslinger, the, the director of that film. Joe, once again, thank you for joining us on Foosball Radio. Hey, thanks for having me. appreciate it. Our sincere thanks to Joe Hestlinger, director of Foosballers, the documentary film. Download it, watch it, and you will be inspired to get on the foosball table and play. Guaranteed. Within the first week of its general public release, Foosballers has now shot to number one on the top ten most downloaded sports films on iTunes, even more than Caddyshack. Congratulations to Joe and the entire cast of Foosballers. Let us know what you think of the film and anything else you'd like to share with us at info at foosballradio.com. Many thanks to the Foosball Radio team. I'm Tom Robinson. Till next time, we'll see you on the table. Foosball Radio was brought to you in part by... 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent. Represent.